We're at it again. It's time for more meat grinder, folks. That's right. Every X minutes, someone gets eliminated. In this case, it's going to be the person with the lowest score eight minutes, and then every four minutes afterwards will be eliminated from the game. We are going to be playing this with the reset on Elim. And this is going to be a bloody lot of fun. Uh, we've actually removed Gully Deckle. It turns out that my stream found a very creative way of blocking Gully Deckle from getting in. All they had to do is redeem the timeout live on Twitch, and then he couldn't use the join command to get in the queue. <laughs> so we've still got some high-level players here. Um, just checking it now. We've got three diamonds, three conks, and two unranked. One of those unranked is Nomad, though, so he's a conk level um, in team games, at least. He plays a lot of free throws, right? So this one should be fairly balanced. I don't think we've got, like, a broken, clear contender of someone to just take the lead and dominate the game. And we've got a nice spread of sieves here, actually. Yeah, roofs don't really come out much, but Krent has opted for them. We've got double Chinese. Remember, the way this rule set works is if you are plat or below, you can choose your sieve. Above, you have to random. That's how I've set this up. Um, Zhuji, Delhi, English, Japanese... And another order that... Wait, how? Okay, I'm going to... Like, remind me at the end chat to question Nomad on this. He better not be picking his sieve. He better be randoming, because I know what his rank is on his main. He, he better not be using my rule set against me here. Because Nomad is definitely... I've seen it before. He's either diamond or conk rank. So he's definitely uh, high enough. Is he really just lucking out and randoming each time? That's crazy. Because he just had Order the Dragon, and it looked slick on this game mode, by the way. The Gilded Archer timing was aggressive and egregious. Um, already, we are only six minutes away from our first elimination. The reason we can run such a low timer for the first elim is because this map is quite small. The funny thing about starting the first elim at eight minutes is it blocks the player that chooses to just full boom. Because even the Civ like the HRE, they could go for a fast castle build, right? But they're going to get there at, like, what, seven, seven and a half minutes, maybe? At which point, they uh, aren't going to have much time to kill anything, considering knights take 30 seconds to get out. So, let's see who's going for some egregious plays. Because we have got double Chinese, right? So, we need to keep an eye on yellow and orange. Okay, so orange is actually not being disgusting with their barbican. Yellow mm, tried slightly. Yeah, they actually blocked out the gold. Funnily enough, though, the weird part is Ezra played to a further away gold. So they still have it at home. Playing Delhi, you don't really care too much about gold, though, right? Like, you can still just kind of feel aggro. You could farm up a storm with that. Um, I've done the maths, by the way. This video, I know it is going to be exactly 32... Well, not exactly, but about 32 minutes long because the first player gets eliminated for uh, eight minutes, rather. Then you have six more elims until the game is over. So four times six, right? So... Pretty cool. I really enjoy this game mode for this. It, it's really nice. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of setup time in the lobby, but the nice thing for people is once they're in the lobby and you're ready to rock and roll within like the next two minutes, you have a very clear idea, a very clear kind of brain space of how much time the game's going to take. So for people that are in a rush or have someone to be in, like, I've only got 40 minutes for a game, they couldn't really play these normal free falls we host without necessarily ruining the game by leaving at 30 or 40 minutes, right? This allows people to actually hang around. I still remember when we had like a three hour long game where Gully was like, I've got to go to bed. I've got to wake up for school in the morning. And he just had to leave and it kind of ruined the balance dynamics. That's the cool thing about this game mode. You never have to worry about that. So Nomad has gone for the mine work. He is going for archers again. It's really effective for sniping out early. Like range units are really quite desirable when you're in this kind of kill early format. Nice work as well. I think men at arms is like the only thing that was very questionable here. The saw me actually going to be the one striking first blood here. Looks like they got a scout kill. So Barbican probably got the snipe down. Kremlin also on the north side. So it looks like people are working together to make Nomad's opening more difficult. He's got Chris, someone who knows him quite well to the north with the Barbican. And then, of course, Kren with the Kremlin to the south. So pretty confined in terms of space here. Blocks out the deer location. Doesn't give him much to work with. And that's really frustrating, actually. Both deers being blocked out as the Order of the Dragon sucks because you lose your ability to play onto pocket resources, which is something that the OOTD does so, so well. Meditation Garden. What did he get in the end? Ooh. Okay, it's not bad. 56 food, 42 stone, but that's because of the idle time. So 64 food and 50 stone, if I'm not mistaken, because he got parts of both of these uh, locations, right? So this is Julie. Yeah, Julie, she got... Actually, she got the full both. So that's pretty damn good. 
going to need it because they are getting pressured already by Ezra. I don't know why we're getting a little bit of lag here. Good lord. Okay, I've, I've got... I've got to talk about this. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rumpy, because we've got to address this. Rumpy was complaining the game was too quick, and he was highlighting that that he's still like he's only reaching feudal age when people are reaching castle age, and he doesn't know how they're doing it in seven minutes. Rumpy, for when you w watch this back, this might be part of the problem, my friend. <laughs> that is not a mining camp. That is a house. These are English people, not dwarves. Okay, <laughs> the mining is not the home. Oh my god. But credit to him. He did get out of Dark Age here. He's in feudal. Lombos actually will allow him to kill some in return. So well played there. Getting Ghazi kills is pretty premium, right? They actually cost quite a bit here. 140 resources. So Nomad is now the person who needs to find some blood to strike real quick here. And what makes it worse is he's chasing after cavalry. Krent can just walk away. <laughs> just walk. Just walk. Okay, Nomad. He's got a minute and 20 seconds to work with. He's trying to wrap onto the main of Krent. Krent just needs to not feed. That's all he needs to do. Krent, just, just don't feed. And luckily for him, the villagers are able to get away as the archers decided to attack a house. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, does he not have... He doesn't have steeled arrow. Oh, my God. He's desperate for it. He's thirsty for just one kill to stay alive. Is he even going to get it, though? No way. He barely gets it. But now the villagers... No man's panicking. <laughs> he doesn't know what to do. Oh my god, he might survive, but guys, this is not surviving. This is ugliness. And it looks like now Chris is the one who finds himself in quite the pickle because why? Wait, why are you going song? Where are your units, Chris? Chris, come on. You need to kill something. You actually need to kill multiple things right now. Julie back safe. And Chris, oh my god, yeah, he was killing. He's in the base over here. Why, hello, sunshine. He ran all the way over to Ezra's base. And now Sormian. Dude, this is so uncomfortable for the first rotation. Sormian, with a difference of 10 points. Are you kidding me? They go out first. I can't believe that. 10 points difference in the end. Great clutch up by Chris. I wondered where the hell the army was. He just rotated so far away. I didn't notice him in the pink blob. And now we reset, right? Four minutes till the next elimination, but you all start from zero again. Ezra immediately farming up. Rumpy also doing pretty well elsewhere on the map. Rumpy, of course, down here in the red. Wait, what did we... Oh my god. Wait, what? <laughs> well, Kavart came for a pie. Diving the TC of the English with Ona Begisha is definitely bold. I'll give him that much. Without Undermesh as well. Luckily for him, it looks like Rumpy forgot about the blacksmiths. And... Wait, is Rumpy dead? <laughs> now, this is an improvement for Rumpy. They made round two, okay? Which, in fairness, like, that that's miles better than their last best performance. Like, this is an improvement. This is good for them. Yo, what's up, Faplop? Thank you very much for the sub, buddy. Oh, my God. I think... Wait, do I need to move that notification, maybe? I might need to set up a different scene because of where the, uh, the UI is. Let's focus on this, though, because we're two and a half minutes away. I I think Rumpy... Like, is he going to, weirdly enough, be safe? He actually might be. I actually think he might survive the next culling because of how much he lost here. Krent right now is kind of worrying me, though. He needs to make a move soon. Nomad survived by the skin of his teeth. You'd think he's an easy target, but now that he's added in Spearman, Krent needs to fix his comp. Right now, he's only building knights. Double stables, in fact. And for some reason, one of those knights is pretending to be a blacksmith. Nice. Now we're rotating again. But 
What are you going for here? Can you actually go into Chris's base, maybe? Also, people asking about point redemptions. I'm not doing point redemption. Like, I'm not doing timeouts midway in a game. I'm not tracking that. All right? So you know what you do? You flame Cow and Crackity for not living 24-7 in my chat. They need to be better mods. Shameful. Ezra's got a pretty scary army right now. Like, 680 as well. He doesn't need to throw anything away. I'm curious. Does he try to go Castle Age soon? Because, like, you've got breathing room now, right? Like, every four minutes. Kind of feels a little bit better. Julie down here. Julie's actually impressed me. Like, she, she has a very kind of... I would say eco boomy approach when we watched Yuji before, but she's getting involved. I love how this game mode just changes how people operate. Right? Like, they can't just camp. They can't just chill and do their typical TC boom type play, which I know Julie likes that Yuji approach a lot. They have to go for the Chuganu spam. They have to come out and play. Unfortunately, right now, Ezra is dodging death. But who is this death for? Because right now, Ghazi plus the Delhi Archers? I don't think Yuji win this. She's got a problem. She needs a fight, though. Funnily enough, Ezra's going to give it to her. Flash comes in. Spearman do get baited out. Archers trade out against that. Garzi are being delayed on the rotation in. And this could be it. Julie will stay alive, but she will not thrive. Chugunu Mass about to be shrunk. Kren. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Ten points? He's gone. What is this? I, I can't believe this game mode right now. That is two people being eliminated with a 10-point difference. That is wild. And now, seeing as I've got a little bit of time, thank you, Farm Man. There we go. We got the timeouts in. Shout out to my boy, Farm Man. So, there's no way Nomad wins this entire game, right? Like, that's where my brain is now going. From the position he had at the start, this should be impossible, but this is starting to look better. Like, a fight against just the Chinese, then again, it is Castle Ace Chinese with Palace Guard spam coming in. I've got a feeling Nomad is not going to like this fight. Looks like he does back away in time. Actually, Chris, feeding over another round. Nomad needs this as well, remember. He idled all his villagers early on. He lost several of them when he tried to dive in just to survive round one. He's in a very uncomfortable position. Elsewhere, Julie, of course, did survive that round, but not pretty for it, right? Like, army got reduced to nothing. This is where you can start to lose a lot of eco to regular raids coming in. <laughs> Wait, Kavart? I'm sorry, how is Rumpy going to survive another round? <laughs> English TC is OP, okay? I think we can all agree with that. The funny part is by some weirdness, Kavar is also going to get enough together at this pace to survive. I can't believe this. TC. Just believe in the TC, guys. He just needs to survive another six minutes. <laughs> six minutes and he's home. Okay, he's done. Julie is going to get a fight as well. This is actually big. <laughs> she really needs it right now. I don't think she wants it quite yet, though. Ezra... Moves the army in and wait, Julie, does she not have anything? Oh my god, she looks bled dry here. She can do mass at what, 20? Nothing more behind this. So you can't even take this fight right now, but you have no choice. Like this is the, the nature of this game mode, is like sometimes even when you're losing, you have to take what you know is a bad fight just to try and survive and come back later. Chris in the meantime says killing buildings is easier than diving DCs. He gets himself a little bit of padding. He needs more than this, though. I would not feel comfortable with 250. You also have to remember, we see everything. Chris doesn't even know what Julie's base looks like. He doesn't know the state of her, right? For all he knows, she could have 50 Chuganu about to push in somewhere. So you need to kill more buildings ASAP. Another thing that kind of makes H3 Order of the Dragon good at certain points in this game mode is the E-repairs, because obviously it denies resource kills away from your opponent. So kind of an interesting detail. Funnily enough, one that Nomad... Doesn't seem to be exploiting. Okay, it was on cooldown still. Oh, wait, he got baited early, though. He repairs way too soon. Dive comes in. And Chris is going to give himself some safety straight away. <laughs> Bloody hell. Well, he's definitely not going out. And I do not know where Rumpy is going. Hell. He's, he's going to hell. He's lost his TC now. Wait, is this everything? Oh, no.
Imagine in your Julie Beck and, K and Kvart, and you look at the game, you're like, this guy survived longer than me? <laughs> Wait, Kvart? Yeah, he needs to fight right now, because look, Rumpy's running away with what Lily has left. The guy who just killed him, he might be able to outlive. Oh my god, dude, you need to burn anything and everything. You need, like, what, two burns? Outpost being targeted. Ten seconds in it. Ezra's... <laughs> he's just trying to move in and take the kills away. No. No, just one tap. Just one tap. He gets it. Wait, they're locked. They're both gone. Wait, what? Oh my God, Julie. She got a last second kill. <laughs> oh no. Dude, I'm going to have to go back and watch that in slow-mo. She must have killed something at the very last second. Because if they had the exact same score, they both would be out. So Julie must have very last second killed something somewhere to stay in that. Oh my god. And now, I can't believe it. Wait, did Rumpy just leave? Nani? Wait. Rumpy, did, did you surrender? Oh, did Rumpy have a tie? Wait, how did he have a tie? <laughs> Wait, was he really the tie? Oh, sorry. I'm an idiot. It was... Oh, wait. It was a double elim. I thought it was Julie. I'm an idiot. Julie got just enough to crawl forward. So it ended up being Rumpy and Kvart that were neck and neck. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe that. I, I was so fixated on that fight. I actually thought that it was Julie and, uh, and Kvart that were neck and neck. Unbelievable. Julie survives by the skin of her teeth. <laughs> so Kvart and Rumpy. It is a double elim. Just to confirm for people, if the scores are the same, they will be eliminated. I must have not noticed the scores move around there. And for some reason, my brain was like 11-20 was um, Julie and Kvar. But she moved forward. The TC shall protect. She stays alive. We are now down to just four. So now the maximum length for this game could be 28 minutes. Man, i got to keep an eye on this. I was so busy watching the numbers, I didn't see this giant jolt up. It's so tricky to keep an eye on this perfectly. That's what I love, though. I actually love that these games are, like, this close. It's insane. Ezra needs some points. Needs to farm. Wait, are we really going for tower defense? <laughs> I mean, you're against Lancers. I guess you have no other choice here. Julie Beck's going to survive again. Ezra farming up in response, though. Nomad is now in trouble. Guys, I don't think Nomad is going to make it any deeper. Oh, man. So this is pretty much the end of Nomad. I don't know how. Like some sort of cockroach, he survived this long. But I think it's fair to say we're going to pull one out for the boy. There's no way back now. I don't think even the TC could redeem you here. The weird part to me is like, Chris, wait, is, wait, wait, Chris. Chris needs to be very careful here, guys, because landmarks don't give any resources. And if he kills Nomad, he'll add two minutes to the timer until next Elim. But that would still be him. And Chris is not anywhere near an opponent right now. So this is very dangerous what Chris is doing. <laughs> In fact, at this rate, no, 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 dude. Chris is going to die. The TC is targeting the clock tower and SDVs. E repairs is coming in clutch. Villagers will go for the torch through. He hides inside. He does lose one of the villies. Nestabees has to peel away. He's trying to get rid of the ram quick enough here to stay alive. Repairs going to come up. No! Oh, no! No, man! It was almost so big brain. But the micro, not quite on point. A clicks too fast on Chris. Chris is going to survive. The TC. The TC. It's not going to matter. GG comes out. Nomad. Two minutes get added to the clock. And now Chris needs to be like a bat out of hell here. He needs 300 points. He needs it ASAP. Ezra needs to dodge it. Julie, by some divine miracle, has got 4,000 points here. She is safe. Like a bank. Chris. That slow moving army needs to waddle out. I can't believe that, man. I actually think if he stayed inside the TC, I don't think Chris noticed that the clock now Nesta is about to die. He probably would have got a point and maybe he could have clutch repaired afterwards, but no, not a chance. Oh, 
Army shifts away. Chris, Ezra needs to be careful. He faces elimination here. Mining camp and house, that's going to be 100 resources. And if you delete these, you're going to lose half their value, I believe, is what we settled on here. So it actually wouldn't save you. Just need to wait it out. Ezra showing up the archers. Lance is looking for a freebie. That would be a freebie right there. The ram, the ram is huge here. Nestabees get dodged out. I mean, that's 200 resources for 6 HP. And guys, that would actually give you enough breathing room that you'd be fine here if you were Ezra instead. Ez, losing track of it right now. Two villagers on the line. Two go down. Less than 100 resources between them. Clash is going to start coming out. Archers start stepping away from this. Lance is throwing the meat in there though. And Ezra, barely staying ahead. Chris, starting to build a lead though. Nestabees Flory comes in big. And Julie is now at risk. Ezra needs to commit to the fight. He'll save himself. He'll doom Julie. But in doing so, he may just hand the game over to Chris. Lance is stand their ground. Julie now next on the chopping block. She has nothing to throw at this. She will be going out in third. It is down to the two. There is going to be a reset. If he can clear the nest of ease, there's a hope in hell. But Ezra is struggling with that detail. Remaining Lancers go in. Nest of Ease still reducing the army. Julie is now out. We have only two people left. And Ezra has got the lead, but only temporarily. Oh my, oh my. <laughs> this game right now. Ezra desperate trying to get a keep together. The one thing that can maybe slow down the hemorrhaging. But I think it's going to come too late. Chris just needs to hit buildings. Buildings are the best way to go. You've got Nest of Ease. You can force a fight with the archers. Rams in the meantime. Oh my god, dude, the work they're doing right now. Chris needs to keep committing here, though. Like, he's rallying the troops together. He's retreating behind this. If he just focuses buildings, he can force a fight very cleanly. Dude, I actually love how insanely close this game has been. What did I say? It's meant to be 32 minutes. But due to the draw and then the kill, we're looking actually at a 26 minute finish. Just shy of 26. I love this game mode so much. Nest of ease. Not going to get shot out. I think the issue for there, Chris, is like he's over ambitious in this fight. This is so much better. Oh my god. Heavy hit for Chris. Managing to just shrink the eco a little, get some more points on the board, and now they're neck and neck. Nest of ease flurry is coming in. Archers are diving. The key drop attempt by Ezra is not going to work here. One Nest of Bees. He's the bees knees in this game. Chris now with a 300 resource kill advantage and is about to be bigger villagers. <laughs> I think that's it, folks. Ez going to try to go for the keep drop. But realistically, Chris could just back away now. Like, there is no reason to leave. <laughs> Poor Ezra. Has he found wood yet? I don't think he has. He's chopping something, I think. I mean, he needs it. Like, he actually doesn't have an ability to get out of this housing crisis. Oh, man. Now I'm doubting he ever will. Castle does at least go up, sure. Uh, the problem is, like, so <laughs> this is awkward, right? Like, keeps can function as TCs, which they are at this point. But TCs give you housing, remember? They give you the 10 pop. Castles don't do that. So, unfortunately, Ezra, once again, is stuck pop locks. <laughs> six lances and six crossbows. That's it. He calls it. Chris, in under 25 minutes, will be your meat grinder champ.